So here we are. We're going to start off by solving uh, radical equations, and there are always the same steps. It's one of those step things, okay? These are, admittedly, some of these are a little more difficult because they're very tricky. Okay, so you have to be careful to always check. There are a lot of equations you don't need to check, but you do need to check these because these can throw extra answers at you, as you'll see. Okay, so here we have a radical equation. In fact, it's a square root radical equation. The first step is already taken care of. The first step when doing these is to isolate a radical. All right, sometimes you have more than one radical term. You have to isolate at least one of them on one side of the equal sign, doesn't matter which side, but you've got to have one of the radicals all by itself. And here you see that. So step one, isolate the radical, is already taken care of. For some reason, my writing always looks better. When I, when I make the, the canvas large. So isolate radical, that's taken care of, check. Now, we go on with step two. This is the really important step and also the tricky step. Square both sides, assuming it's a, it's a square root radical problem. Square both sides. of equation. And here's what that looks like. I, well, let's change colors. Keeps me entertained. You take the entire left side and square it, and the entire right side and square it. The reason for doing that is you cannot solve this equation until you get that X out from under the radical. OK, so um, I think of it this way because it's a really good idea to create little stories around this. It's a way to make memorizing easier. OK, this is a a prison cell or a jail cell. And X and and the roommate. Negative five are here. X minus five. And you're one of their best friends or their relative. And you're going to bust them out of jail. And how are you going to do it? You're going to blow up their jail jail cell. Boom. OK. Since you're squaring a square root, that's the effect that they have on each other. Kaboom! Now, X and minus 5 are somewhat dusty, we assume. That would make sense. But at least they're out of the jail cell. And they're free, they're free. Meanwhile, over on the left, I need more room. Okay, I've got a binomial here and I'm going to square it. So I can't just square each term. Instead, what I have to do is say, okay, I am not gonna be tricked. This is X minus seven times X minus seven. Then I multiply them together. 
the way I always do. X times X, X times minus seven, minus seven times X, and minus seven times minus seven. So much for making my red turn on. Oh well. So we're going to have X squared minus seven X minus seven X and then negative seven or minus seven. Here they're minus seven. Same thing though, negative seven minus seven. Uh, minus seven times minus seven is plus 49. And what that equals is X minus five. Okay. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to combine these like terms. I've taken away 7x and now I take away 7x more. That's like taking away 7x's, then taking away another 7x's. So I have taken away 14x's. Okay, then. Okay, obviously I have to click twice on them. Plus five, every time there's an update, things change. These guys zero out, I'm left with X. Ooh, but I don't really want to be left with X. So let's subtract X. What an idea. I'm brilliant. Minus X minus X. Yes, and what that's going to do over here is give me zero plus zero, which we know is zero. And over here, we're going to have x squared minus 14x minus 1x is minus 15x. And then 49 plus 5 is 54 plus 54. So I'm going to move this over right now just because writing, you know, we're trained from the time we're little kids. Don't write on the left side of the red line. So I know my first grade teacher is going to appear out of the mist and start beating me. Okay, that's X squared minus 15X plus 54 equals zero. I'm gonna solve that like I normally would. Okay, plus 54 equals negative six times negative nine, and negative six plus negative nine equals negative 15. So minus six minus nine. And then I set both of them equal, wiggle wiggle, to zero, x minus six, equals zero, X minus nine equals zero, plus six, plus six, X equals six, plus nine, plus nine, X equals nine. Now comes the tricky part. Here are the possibilities. X equals six and nine. That's a possible answer.
and I'm serious here. All right, X doesn't equal six and X doesn't equal nine. And that happens. So your answer is no solution. I hate it when it happens. I have this ridiculous human response, which is I went to all that trouble and this is all I get. None of them, none of my answers work. Couldn't it also be X minus 18 multiplied by X plus three? So the solution would be uh, X equals 18 uh, and X equals negative three? It could be, except then that's very good thinking. This is plus 54. Oh, uh, right. If we had negative 54, it would work. Good thinking. You want to think about all these possibilities, which is kind of what we're doing right now. All right, those are two possibilities. And then another possibility is just that X equals six. And, or I should say, or. That X equals nine. And the reason for just six is that you checked your answer and nine didn't check. X, so X doesn't equal nine. And here X equals nine, but X doesn't equal six. All of those possibilities are equally possible with this kind of problem. As soon as you square both sides of an equation, you cannot be sure of your answers any longer. So for that reason, we have to check, we have to, and there's no choice. So what would that be, three? Let's see, square both sides, solve, check. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to check X equals six, check X equals nine. Those are my two possible answers, right? Yes. Okay. And what, where do I check it? I have to go back to the original line x minus 7 equals the square root of x minus 5. So I'm going to put 6 in. 6 minus 7 equals the square root of 6 minus 5. So negative 1 equals the square root of negative 1. Ah. Uh. Oh, that's a positive one. Positive one. Never mind. 6 minus 7, negative 1, equals the square root of positive 1. So negative 1 equals 1. That's not true. They're two different numbers. In fact, they're on opposite sides of 0 on the x-axis. So, this is a, a false. This is a false answer. Now, it means more than just, well, okay, let's eliminate. Let's just draw a big X through it. Because X equals six is something important. X equals six is an extraneous solution 
to the equation. Solution to what? To, to the equation. So it's not just nothing. It's an extra answer you picked up that is a solution to x squared minus 15x plus 54. It's just not a solution to this guy, the original line up here. All right, so let's pick nine. Nine minus seven equals the square root of nine minus five. Nine minus seven is two. The square root of nine minus five, which is four. And you can tell <clears throat> that this is going to work. The square root of four is two. This is true. That doesn't mean that two is your answer. It means that X minus nine is the only solution to this problem. So any other answer you came up with would be wrong. It's only this one. Okay. You haven't encountered anything like this before. Okay, if, if you wanna ask anything later, if you want me to come back to this, I'm glad to do it. Yeah, can we do like one more of those? Uh, well, we are. Yeah, we have more than one. I oh, promise. Good, good. We I'm have a ton. <laughs> we have a whole bunch. And also for a problem like that in my math lab, will it only want nine as the correct answer? That's correct. You'll okay. just put a nine. If you put six and nine, it'll mark it wrong. And then on the test, I will give you partial credit, but you won't get the full credit. OK, thank you. You're welcome. All right, now all those steps apply that we wrote up here. Notice that this time I'm going to have to isolate the radical, OK, because on the same side of the equation, I have a plus five. So we're going to move this over right now. Minus five, minus five. So we have the square root of x plus seven equals x minus five. And now it's exactly like the other problem. So now we square the whole left side and we square the whole right side. And on the left side, we break these guys out of jail, which gives us X plus seven. And over here, I'm going to have to foil that. So X plus seven, or I should have said multiply. Let's try this. Double click. Wow. Well, X times X, X times minus five. Double click. Minus five times X and minus five times minus five. Now I'm happy. We'll have x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 20. 
5. Oh, let me say something that will make you smile. Maybe it'll make you smile. We have to come to class next Saturday, which is the 20th, I think. Yes, we are going to have class next week, the 20th. That won't make you smile, probably. What will make you smile is that the following Saturday, the 27th, is part of spring break. So we will not have class then. In fact, for those of you taking multiple classes, there will be no classes at NWAG from Sunday, March 21st uh, to Sunday, March 28th. Not that we have classes on Sunday, but that'll be spring break. From the 21st to the 28th, you can go to Florida and cavort on the beach. If cavorting is your thing. With a mask on. Can't take your mask off yet. I wonder if they'll have the beaches open. Certainly they will. I don't know. OK, here we go. I just wanted to throw that out. If you can just survive for one more week, you get to have spring break. That's keeping me going. OK, let's go back to work. X plus 7 equals X squared minus 10X plus 25. Now I pull over the X because it's a quadratic equation, highest power 2. You pull everything over to one side, set it equal to 0, and that's called the zero principle. I think it is. So I subtract 7, I subtract, uh, no I don't, I lied. I subtract X, I subtract X. Then I subtract 7, I subtract 7. So I'll have 0 plus 0, which is 0. Over here, x squared minus 11x plus 18. So zero equals x squared minus 11x plus 18. And then you do a quick check to see if it's factorable, but you can always use the quadratic formula. Um, 18 equals negative nine times negative 2, because it's positive 18. And then when you add negative 9 plus negative 2, you get negative 11. So I'll factor like this. And then I'll do what I did before. Set each of those factors equal to 0. Add nine, add nine. X equals positive nine. Add two, add two. X equals two and yeah, there you go. For those of you who might find it confusing, I didn't do that. So those are my possible answers, but just like before, I'm going to have to check my answers. Now, I have to go back to the first line. So we're going to check x equals nine <clears throat> and x equals two. 
And our first line is the square root of X plus seven plus five equals X. So that'll give us the square root of nine plus seven plus five equals nine. Nine. OK, cool. This is going to be the square root of 16, and now you can see it's true. This is 4 plus 5 is 9. Definitely 9 equals 9. So this is true. However, it's always possible that the other answer could also be true. Although, quite honestly, oh, let's see. I was going to say probably not, but I don't know that. 2 plus 7 is under the radical. Plus 5 equals 2. So we're going to have the square root of 9 plus 5 equals 2, 3, nah, plus 5 equals 2, 8 does not equal 2. No, this is false. And what that means is that x equals 2 is extraneous. Okay, so some of the problems ask you for the solution so you would say, you know, and they would have x equals and then they would have the answer box and you would write type 9. But then you would actually be asked to list the extraneous answers. Extraneous solutions, rather. And that would be, I don't know if they put X equals six, probably, probably they would not, probably, yeah, okay. Right, they just give you a box, and then if you have more than one extraneous answer, you would list them with a comma in between. But here we only have one, so that would be two. Sometimes you're asked, sometimes you're not. Okay, this is exactly, almost exactly, except you have to actually do the first step, subtract five from both sides. Other than that, this is exactly, totally just like this problem here. Questions, discussion. Okay. And this is another one that's just like those. There. Grouchy old teacher. Let's move on to this. Here we have an equation with 
two radicals. But the first step still applies. I need to isolate one of these. So what I usually do if one of them is being subtracted, I just go ahead and add that one to both sides of the equation. Okay, now that will leave us the square root of 4y plus 16 equals 6 plus the square root of y minus 5. Now, I could, if I wanted to, say, well, there is a GCF in there. And pull it out and take the square root of it. Four would be the, the GCF. So, and then I would take the square root of, of four, which is two. So I'd have a two on the outside. But in the end, that won't do me any good. Won't do me any good at all. So I'm just going to leave it this way the square root of 4y plus 16 equals 6 plus the square root of y minus 5. And then, right, the first step is isolate one radical. And two is then square both sides. Both sides of the equal sign. So I'm going to do that now. It gets a little hairy here. Over here, the square root and the square just kind of explode each other out of existence, leaving us with 4y plus 16, the radicand, the thing underneath. But over here, we're going to have the following somewhat scary problem. And I want to shorten that and shorten that so I don't have to skip a line. There, okay. So over here, I'm gonna say six times six, six, times the square root of y minus 5, the square root plus the square root of y minus 5 times 6, and plus the square root of y minus 5 times plus the square root of y minus 5, and I did want to make that blue, but oh well, and I still, I'm still going to have to skip a line anyway. That's like, so 4y plus 16 equals, here we go, take a deep breath, and go one step at a time. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times plus the square root of y minus 5 is going to be plus 6 times the square root of y minus 5. Now plus the square root of y minus 5 times 6 
is plus six times the square root of y minus five. And then plus the square root of y minus five times plus the square root of y minus five is plus the square root of y minus five squared. Okay, I'll let you look at this. Over here, notice that you've got six times the square root of y minus five, y minus five, yeah. And that occurs twice. So what this is, is six times the square root of y minus five plus another six times the square root of y minus five adds up to 12 times the square root of y minus five. You've got six square roots plus another six square roots. That means you've got 12 square roots. You've got 36 down here, plus, plus, we get to do this again. Isn't this fun? We get to explode a jail cell. Woo! Kaboom! Square root, square, they get rid of each other. Which will leave me y minus 5, the radicand. now free. Okay. Okay, now. We, we don't have a quadratic equation, do we? No, but you know what we do have? We have a radical equation. We still have a radical. So now we've got to start all over again and isolate the radical. We're going to go through our list of steps again. So I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides of the equation. I'm going to, oh, no I'm not. Should, don't do that, I jumped. No, we've got this Three minus five over here. Let's combine like terms before we start going to the other side of the equation. So four y plus sixteen equals thirty six minus five. That's thirty one plus 12 times the square root of y minus 5. Very cool, ultimately cool. Now I'll subtract 31 from both sides of the equation. For y minus Let's find out minus what? Come on, there. 16 minus 31 is negative 15. And I had already written down the minus sign. Thirty one minus thirty one is zero. I'll be left with twelve times the square root 
of y minus five. Oh, pain. You've also got to subtract a y from the right side of the equation. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Oh, that is wonderful. Yes. So yeah, I didn't do it, did I? Plus Y. So I've still got a plus Y. My life has just been made easier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because look Whoop. what look what happens. Yeah, I just left it over there. It's a plus Y. Since I didn't take it away, I should have. But I didn't. So it's still there. Now I'm going to take it away. Minus Y. Minus Y. So these guys zero out. And what I'm left with is 12 times the square root of Y minus 5. And over here, 4Y minus Y is 3Y minus 5. 15. Okay. Now, if you were doing this in real life and it really represented something, you probably would not have a very convenient GCF to pull out. Or you might have. It's hard to say. But here, notice that 15 is 3 times 5. So we have a GCF we can pull out here. Most of these problems in the book, these are all taken from the book, the textbook. Most of these problems have at least one little trick that will make life somewhat easier for you. And here it is. You've got an equation, so you can, if you feel like it, divide both sides by three. As long as it's just a number and not a variable, you can do this. Now three goes into 12 four times. So now we have a somewhat easier radical equation to deal with. Professor, would we not have uh, the root of y minus 5 over 3? So 4 times the root of 5 minus y over 3. That's good thinking again. If this had been 12 plus the square root of y minus 5 over 3, then we would have had 12 over 3 plus the square root of y minus 5 over 3. But it's not. It's 12 times the square root. of y minus 5. So since they're multiplied, what this is, is, bring an arrow down, 3 times 4 times the square root of y minus 5 over 3. So the 3's cancel. And what I'm left with is 4 times the square root of y minus 5. I see, thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you're bringing this up. I'm going to leave this here. Little note. Okay. Now, I have to do what I have to do, which is square both sides again. Because those are multiplied, I can't subtract the 4. Now, I could have divided by 4, but that would just give me a fraction over here. 
So I do believe in trying to keep things as easy as possible. Over here, I'm going to have y minus 5 times y minus 5. And over here, now watch this, these are multiplied. So what I've really got, what I'm going to have is 4 squared times the square root of y minus 5 squared. It's the difference between addition and multiplication. If that were multiplied, I mean, if that were added, then I would have to do this. I would have to go like this for plus the square root of y minus 5 times 4 plus the square root of y minus 5. That would not be fun. We, we could do it. But since these are multiplied, I don't have to do it. It just means each one of these things gets multiplied. So this is going to be over here, 16 times, well, times y minus 5. Because a square and a square root, kaboom, like matter, matter and antimatter, or blowing up the jail cell. Two different stories you can use. Over here, though, we're going to go y squared minus 5y minus 5y plus 25. And I did, got that from going boom, 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 boom. So we'll have y squared minus 10y plus 25 equals 16y minus 80. Yes, okay. Now it's a quadratic equation. I pull everything over to the side, set it equal to zero. Minus 16y. Minus 16y. Plus 80. Plus 80. So I'll have y squared. Minus 26y. Plus 105. equals zero, zero plus zero, zero plus zero is zero. So that's what I've got now. And I think it's time to let the calculator do the walking or working or both. Okay, 105 divided by x, and then down to y2, x plus 105 divided by x. For those of you who haven't seen this before, this is a wonderful combination. So let me um, uh, copy it and put it in the notes.
so you can see it. Why have I done that? Have I gone crazy? For those of you who haven't seen it before. Well, I've always been crazy. I mean, it's just something you have to adapt to. Most math people are in their own way. Own adorable way. Where? Ah, there it is. Hiding, trying to hide from me. Now what I'm going to do after that is I click on second graph. So the second key, and then the graph key. I don't hold them down at the same time. I hold them, I go punch, punch. So here we go, second graph. Now the number I want, this has to give me two factors that add up to negative 26. So that means I want to come over to Y2 and find negative 26. So I'm going to write that down also. Look at Y2 column. Find negative 26. If this is factorable, we'll be able to find negative 26. However, these are all positive. So let's move up where they're negative. There's negative 26. Woo, woo, woo. Negative five times negative 21. I'm going to take a picture of this too. OK, let me save this. No. Want to make sure it's big enough for you to see. There. Now. Let me move this up. Here's. Negative 26. Here are the numbers that add up to negative 26. Now, I'm not one of those people that thinks calculators can never make a mistake. So I'm going to make sure that negative 5 times negative 21 equals positive 105. So I'm sorry to doubt you, calculator. But it's a good idea to do that. See, second quit. OK, I just want to know for sure. Negative 5 times negative 21. Is positive 105. Negative 5 plus negative 21. Is negative 26. That is our combination. Woo! See, so this magical combination will do that for you. Now I know how to factor it and I can pretend I always knew. Piece of cake. 
You mean you weren't born knowing that? This trick goes all the way back to the very first graphing calculator that TI put out, the TI-82. You can't even find it in the stores anymore, it's so old. Probably a collector's item. Okay, plus five, plus five. And plus 21, plus 21. Oh. There. Yeah, yeah, now I could just settle for that. But this is a radical equation. It's, it's begging to trick me. So what I'm going to have to do is Get rid of that little thing there. And uh, find a decent place to check the answer. Let's check it in here. So this is where we will check. And let's check y equals 5 and y equals 21. And remember, there's no guarantee. Ain't no guarantees here. Square root of 4y plus 16. Minus the square root of y minus 5 equals 6. All right, so y equals 5. We're going to have the square root of 4 times 5 plus 16 minus the square root of 5 minus 5 equals 6. So we're going to have the square root of 20 plus 16 minus 0 equals 6. That's the square root of 36. This is true. So 6 equals 6. All right, we know that y minus 5 is going to be one of our really true answers. Now let's come over here and do the same thing with 21. So we'll have the square root of 4 times 21 plus 16 minus the square root of 21 minus 5 equals 6. So this is the square root of 84 plus 16 minus the square root of 16 equals 6. This is the square root of 100. And this is, well, the square root of 16 is 4. So we're going to have 10 minus 4. So 6 equals 6. My goodness, y equals 21 is also a solution. Well, doggone, let's go back up here to the top. This time our answer is going to be y equals 
5, and 21. Let's take a break, 10 minutes. It's now 9 o'clock, be back at 9.10. And we will change the subject. No, we won't, we still have things to do. We have word problems. So see you in 10 minutes. 